So hi everyone myself Dr Saiti team MGS Conquer so the next topic from your anatomy for your basics paper is the lymphatic system of head and neck so as every every essay question has to start with contents so you have to put on this contents as given here so you can start the introduction like it's a closed system of lymphatic channels or vessels through which the lymph flows so it's actually one way system where the lymph flows from the tissue spaces to to the blood okay so this is how you can start the introduction and then you can go with next is the development so in the fifth week the lymphatic vessels and the main clusters of the lymph nodes are being formed and they arise from the budding of the lymph sacs from the developing veins so it's just a mild uh, introduction of the development okay so again the lymphoid organs then develop into a meson mesodermal mesenchymal cells and the thymus being the first lymphoid organ to appear okay and except spleen and tonsils other lymphoid uh, uh, organs are actually poorly developed before the birth so they are actually developed after the birth except the spleen and tonsils so this is a little introduction of the development that you can give next coming to its anatomy and physiology which is very important so the lymphatic system actually consists of all these that is the lymph the lymph vessels the lymphoid cells the lymphoid tissues lymph nodes and the lymphoid organs so we'll discuss with everything in detail so the lymph is nothing but the extracellular fluid connective tissue which is dominated by the lymphocytes so as the blood circulates throughout the body the nutrients the waste and the gases are being exchanged between the blood and the interstitial fluid so four primary hydrostat uh, hydrostatic and the collateral osmotic forces actually determine the fluid movement through the capillary membrane those are called as the starling forces so those include the capillary pressure the interstitial uh, fluid pressure the capillary plasma colloidal osmotic pressure and the interstitial fluid um, osmotic pressure so this is how these are the starling forces because of which the fluid actually gets exchanged so if you, if you can just put this it's enough so just have a look and put this diagram that's more than enough okay so next coming to the lymphatic vessels so the lymphatic vessels are the one way system from uh, in which the lymph flows towards the heart so this transport actually begins in microscopic blind and lymphatic capillaries so you can see the capillaries which are seen here okay so you can just uh, put these uh, the lymphatic capillaries the green capillaries which you can see in this diagram so you can draw this diagram and you can uh, enhance your answer okay next the flow of the lymph is like via lymphatic capillaries towards the vessels towards the trunk and finally to the ducts okay this is how the lymph flows so the lymph transport is uh, actually the smooth vessel which is in the walls of the lymphatic trunks and the thoracic duct actually contracts rhythmically to help in pumping the lymph so this is how the lymph is being transported so the lymphoid cells are the lymphocytes which are arise in the red bone marrow and they mature to form the t cells and b cells we know that so activated t cells manage the immune system so they directly attack the and destroy the infected cells and b cells are mainly responsible for producing the plasma cells which again are very important to secrete the antibodies okay so these are the lymphoid cells so next coming to the lymphoid tissue so again you can write it's largely it is a reticular connective tissue so the lymphocytes actually reside temporarily in the lymphoid tissue and then they leave to patrol the body again so just a little every see uh, i as i suggest the headings of every question is very important so now the anat part we have been discussing the lymph the lymphoid cells the lymphoid tissue all that so first put headings and write description for everything so not entire detailed description is not required single line description or two three lines description is enough because essay question you can't write more than 6 to 7 pages right so if you can uh, put forward few flow charts and diagrams and descriptive part it will definitely increase your bulk of your answer okay so again the lymph nodes we know the important lymph nodes which are there so lymph uh, they are actually main two ma major functions of the lymph nodes that is the lymph filters and it also activate the immune system okay so next coming to the structure of the lymph nodes so string lymph nodes are again very important so they are actually bean shaped structures and histologically it has two characteristic 
distinct regions which includes the cortex and the medulla so it is actually it is structure which is capsulated and it has a connecting strands which are called as trabeculae okay so this is simple lymph node structure do draw this diagram if a lymphatic system is asked for the essay question this diagram will add or will fetch you more marks so draw this diagram it's simple to draw so do draw it next coming to the lymphoid organs the primary and the secondary the primary lymphoid organs are the thymus and the bone marrow so again you can describe the thymus so it is behind the sternum and especially well developed in newborn and the growing child so the surface of the thymus is divided into many lobes so this is the draw uh, diagram of the thymus if you can draw it's okay or else you can ignore it's okay so next coming to the spleen spleen is again a lymphoid organ so it is one of the largest lymphoid organ okay so here with we have given a basic idea of the anat anatomy part or the important aspect related to the lymphatic system so you have to write in a in a same order okay just make first after this discussion again note the important headings and the individual descriptive part which is important that's enough okay so you can write the lymphatic cells the lymphoid tissues the lymph nodes the lymphoid organs again individually you can have the individual descriptions you can add it later okay so next coming to the tonsils these are again the lymphoid organs so coming to the orofacial region so coming important in the orofacial regions are the tonsils okay so we know the valdez ring so this valdez ring diagram has to fall in so you can uh, diagrams which are important as i said it's a cross section cross section of the lymph node you have to draw later you have to draw this valdez ring if it is orofacial region so valdez ring all these are the important lymphoid organs related to the orofacial ring so you have to draw this diagram okay so which include the tubular tonsils the nasopharyngeal tonsils or so the adenoids the palatine the lingual tonsils and the lateral pharyngeal band so these have to you have to put in this word and you have to draw this diagram that will be very fetching so then you have to classify okay the head and neck Uh, lymph nodes you have to classify like so which come under the superficial and the deep okay the outer circle the inner circle these are the outer circle and these are the inner circle and the deep terminal lymph nodes that is the upper jugular digastric and the inner comes the jugular omohyoid so the outer circle importantly the submandibular submental buccal parotid mastoid occipital and the superficial cervical and the anterior cervical whereas the inner circle includes the prelaryngeal pretracheal paratracheal and the retropharyngeal so this is directly taken from your chaurashya so next uh, this is according to the gray's anatomy so horizontal chain uh, textbook this is given like that so you even you can mention so according to gray's it is given like this even while writing the answer if you if you can mention that's again fetching so horizontal chain outer circle inner circle and the valdez ring okay so the outer circle in the head and in the neck again you can classify so in the head it's occipital retroauricular parotid and buccal and in the neck it's submandibular submental and the cervical lymph node so like this you can write so inner circle again all these that is pretracheal pretracheal paratracheal retropharyngeal lingual and the infrahyoid okay so the vertical chain includes all these so you ha you have to write accordingly so this it's if you write it's really fetching okay so according to chaurashya it's uh, that classification which was clearly described in the flow chart and according to the grace it is like it is given like this outer circle and the inner circle and again horizontal and the vertical chains are being given so you can write like that now in case if it is an essay answer you can just put a box like this you can draw a very big box and you can write the innovations efference and the efference of that particular lymph node so do have a look of individual lymph nodes it's quite simple the name itself has the F, uh, has the efference and the efference so occipital is like the occipital region and difference is to the sub, uh, superior cervical glands okay it's like that so posterior auricular is again from the temporal region or the auricular and a pinna that's the back side of the external auditory meatus and again it efference or it goes to the superior deep uh, cervical gland so the parotid individual glands you can individual lymph nodes you can write so so do write do make a note of this it's very important so if you write because that is the main heart of your answer okay 
so again the facial nodes the submandibular nodes so how the the location the afferents and the efferents so if you write like this it is really fetching so do write it like this all the other nodes like the submental the anterior cervical and the super, superficial cervical so i'm not going to read everything anyways this is there in this boxes so just make a notes of this so uh, 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 the rest all is one thing and this is again another thing so this is the main scoring part the diagrams and this box will fetch you more marks so do draw this uh, box if you can okay so next coming to the drainage of the scalp and the ear so it's just additive points it's not required but if you can write for the scalp and the ear it's it's useful so just write these if you can next of the face this is actually important so this diagram again you can draw so the upper part is to the preauricular lymph nodes the middle part is submandibular and the lower part is to submental so you can draw this diagram so as it shows and you can label it there so do uh, uh, draw the diagram and do mention for the lymphatic drainage of the face so coming to the clinical approach so you need to take the detailed history of if you if you think the patient is having an, any etiology of related enlarged lymph nodes then you have to take the detailed history later you have to evaluate you know every every dentist usually does this or oh, inspection and palpation so we have to evaluate for the location number size consistency discrete the number of unmatted nodes tenderness and even fixity to the underlying structure so this examination is important so how do you examine you everyone knows that so but you have to write because the clinical aspects is very important so individual nodes we have to write for preauricular for postauricular so preauricular it's like in front of the ear you do with your in uh, fingers and then digital aspect of your fingers and again post auricular do submandib submandibular glands you have to bend the neck towards the side of examination for submental you have to bend the neck forwards and then you have to examine okay again this diagrams clearly shows the super, uh, superficial cervical the posterior cervical you have to bend opposite and you have to uh, look for the lymph nodes deep cervical and the supraclavicular okay this is how you have to examine then if the palpation uh, node characteristics you have to write so it could be the acute infection it's large soft painful mobile discrete rapid onset chronic infection it is large firm less tender lymphomas it is rubbery in consistency metastatic cancer it is stony hard and it is fixed to the underlying structures so you have to write these this is very fetching syphilis it is shorty lymph nodes tuberculous uh, tuberculosis you know the matted lymph nodes are there but again it is as three stages in the first stage nodes are enlarged without matting in the second stage matting is seen third stage cold abscess occur and other applied aspects so it's again useful so lymph node examination and lymph nodes evaluation is very important in prediction of the disease history for diagnosis and also in prediction for the prognosis and the treatment outcome okay so for the head and neck side so especially for the oral medicine and oral pathology students you have to write the nodal st uh, staging of the node uh, nodal staging end staging you have to write okay so this is very important so next again you have to write the disease of the lymphatics that is lymph lymphangitis neoplasms of the lymphatics you have to just mention these and then you have to write the disease of the specific lymph nodes either it could be inflammatory neoplastic or leukemias or autoimmune disorders you can write this classification which is given here and then you have to clearly mention about the lymphadenitis so it could be any infectious or it could be due to any other underlying cause so you can write these and lymphadenopathy is nothing but the enlargement of one or more lymph nodes which is described as greater than 1 cm in its size so generalized lymphadenopathy these are the causes so it could be infectious like systemic viral infections or infectious mononucleosis or hiv or it could be any malignant etiology like the leukemias or lymphomas and storage disorders like the neiman pex disease and localized lymphadenopathy it could be the in Uh, local infections or viral infections are either bacterial viral and all that or a non infectious etiology could be acute lymph leukemia lymphoma kawasaki disease and neuroblastoma okay so submaxillary and submental again the oral and dental infections and occipital includes the uh, rubella and scalp infections and preauricular includes any skin infections or scratch scratch disease or any ophthalmic infection 
so supraclavicular lymphadenopathy okay the work goes notes we call it so if it is on left uh, left uh, it's related to malignancy on right it is intrathoracic lesions simple so i've just give a 